Turn in your Bibles this morning to the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew and chapter 6. We'll be reading and looking at verses 19 through 24. Where are your thoughts? Not necessarily right now, but in the course of any given week, where are your thoughts? What do you think about? What are your time and energy spent on? Are your thoughts on earthly things? Or are they on heavenly things? Where are your affections? Verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, for moth and rust doth corrupt, and or thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon riches, the things of the world. The Lord Jesus Christ here in this passage of Scripture gives his disciples, his true disciples, a contrast between two kinds of riches, two kinds of hearts, And two masters, two kinds of masters. First of all is the two treasures. First one he deals with is earthly treasure. These are <clears throat> things that are stored up on earth. things that we spend a lot of our time and energies and accumulating for ourselves one degree or the other they are those things which we can see with our eyes and handle touch with our hands well, those are the most important, right? There's nothing else, right? Just what you can see and what you can touch. 
That's all that's real. Right? It is these things that we value. Because we can see them, because we can touch them, and, and we are concerned about getting them for ourselves. And we think that the more we have of those things, the more comfortable our life will be. If we're a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and are guilty of that kind of thinking, that guilty of those kind of actions, then we're a hypocrite. I said if we're a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, then we're a hypocrite. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Do not store up for yourselves these things. Now Jesus is not forbidding the ownership of these things. We need a certain amount of them, don't we? Don't we? But he's forbidding and, and setting straight the record that getting more than is necessary for the care of this body and for our families. That's forbidden. Earthly riches are not secure, he says. They're not secure. Another place that we'll be looking at calls them temporal. They're, they're temporary. They're just here in this life. They're, they are stolen, he says. <laughs> they waste away. through decay and malls and they certainly can't be taken with us Amen. naked came I into this world and naked I shall leave with me to the book of Psalms in chapter 39. The book of Psalms in chapter 39. And in verse 6 we read Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. He says, he says the pursuit of those things and the desire of those things is vanity. It's vain. It, it means nothing. It's empty. He says, you, you lay up riches and for what purpose? so that another can enjoy them? You spend all your time and all your energies in getting these things and then they're taken away from you. Or you leave them and someone else gets to then enjoy them or squander them or whatever. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, in the 23rd chapter. In verse 5, 
Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. You see? <laughs> you ever hear the saying, easy come, easy go? Well, that's never been more obvious than it is, has been in our day and age time. How many of these people buying lottery tickets and, and then the, uh, somebody wins it and then a few days, years later you, you hear that they're bankrupt? There was a rich man in the book of Luke Farmer. And he tore down his old barns and built new barns and bigger barns that would hold much more. And stored them full. Said, so I'll take, step back and take my knees. And the Lord said unto him, Thou fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Book of 1 Timothy in chapter 6 and verse 7. We're told, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Think about that. Then he begins to deal in verse 20 with the heavenly treasures. The true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is where, this is where he is to spend his time and his energies. They are things which are stored up in heaven. You say, well how can you store up these things in heaven, well, we're not talking about these things which you can see and which you can touch with your hand. You see, these, these are things that, that are not seen with our eyes. And we're not able to handle them with our hands. But even though we cannot see them, and even though we cannot touch them, we value them. They're valuable to us. In fact, they're so valuable that we treasure them above everything else. Where is your treasure? What is your treasure? The book of 2 Corinthians in chapter 4, verse 18, we're told, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen with the physical eye, those things that we can see with the physical eye, we can touch with our hands, are temporal. The word temporal just means temporary. It's just for this life. It's things of this life. But the things which are not seen are eternal. The things which are not seen, the things which are stored up in heaven are eternal. Lay up for yourselves heavenly riches. You might be saying well, this morning, well, what are those heavenly riches? What is, what is those valuable things that were to be laying up in heaven? We're doing the will of God. 
You might say, well, what, what is the will of God? <laughs> well, first of all, that you repent of your sins toward God. And that you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The John the Baptist came preaching repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came preaching the same in the book of Mark chapter 1 and in verse 14. He says, now after these things, Jesus, uh, John, now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye. Repent of your sins toward God and believe it the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ. And thus, you're doing the will of God. And when you've done it, it's something that cannot be taken away from you. It is something which is eternal. In the heavens. And then, when you're in Christ Jesus, oh, there, there are many scriptures that tell us that we ought to do the will of God. As a child of God, we ought to do the will of God. The book of Ephesians in chapter 6, in verse 6 says, Now with eye service, <laughs> not the things which you see, not with eye service, as Men pleasers, <laughs> that which pleases men and satisfies men. And, and is not that been the subject of the sixth chapter of the book of Matthew? You see, the hypocrite he is all about getting the praise of men. But the true child of God is concerned with the praise of God. And, and that, is that what I'm doing, pleasing God? But as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. <laughs> from the heart. Not because... Well, brother so-and-so expects it of me, or sister so-and-so expects it of me, or what will they think of me? <laughs> no, we're to do it out of a heart that loves God. Amen. And wants to please God. You see, what brother and sister expect of me? Well, that's men-pleasers. He said, not as men-pleasers but as servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. Heavenly riches are, are incorruptible. Those, those things, that the will of God, and, and, and I might add further, everything that you see in here, find in here is doing the will of God. Be obedient to the word of God. You're pleased, God. And those things, those things which we see from the Word of God and, and, and we do out of a heart because we love Him, they're incorruptible. Repentance and faith cannot be taken away from us. Those good works that we do stemming from repentance and faith, they cannot be taken away from us. Look with me at 1 Peter, the book of 1 Peter in chapter 1. In verse 4, he said, To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. 
It's an inheritance that we have. It's incorruptible. And faith is not away. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 4 says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption uh, that is in the world through lust. You see, the child of God has escaped that corruption that's in the world through the lust of the flesh and the desires of the flesh, and he ought to be living above it. And living above it means storing up treasures in heaven that are incorruptible. And it fadeth not away. Then the very familiar portion of the scripture, at least to some of us. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for his home, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's life? Listen, if we have the Son, if we have the Son of God, if we have the Lord Jesus Christ through repentance and faith, then no one can lay anything to our charge. They can't condemn us. Verse 1 of this chapter says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who follow after the Spirit not after the flesh. Verse 35 goes on to say who shall separate us from the love of God? Who can take that away from us? He goes on in the rest of those verses to say that there's no one or anything that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Praise His name. You see, that's heavenly treasures. That's heavenly riches. Our, our times as a, as a disciple, true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ ought to be spent amassing things in heaven and not storing up things here on earth that we can't take with us and that we're only going to leave for someone else to enjoy. Think about that. What if the Lord said unto you, this night thy soul shall be required of thee then whose will all these things be? You see. And what have you laid up in store in heaven? And then in verses 21 through 23, he addresses two hearts. Two hearts. And he addresses them in the form of the eye. Starting off with verse 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And then he, then he compares that, that heart to the scenario of the, of the eye, and, and one eye is single. That is, it's full, it's complete, it's, it's, it's resting in the things of God, it's, it's focused upon the things of God, but then there's the evil eye. You see, the eye that is single, the eye that is resting in God, or trusting in God, is full of light. And the whole body is full of light. The eye that is evil is dark. And so the whole body is full of darkness. So we address, first of all, the good heart. The good heart is just like a just like a good eye, just like the single eye. You see, the, the eye is, is a gate that gives 
entrance into the mind. Think about that. What you see with the eye gives entrances into your mind, into your heart. What do you think of when you see a nice, new, shiny car? I don't know where your treasures lie. That may not trip your trigger, but something does. Maybe with Brother Ron, it's a nice, brand new, shiny horn that he can have and play. Tuts. You see, the eye is the gate to the mind. And what a man looks at is what he thinks about. And what he thinks about is what he becomes. So I asked you this morning, what are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? What's your time and your energy spent on? Turn with me to the book of Proverbs again in the 23rd chapter. The book of Proverbs in chapter 23. Verse 6 says, Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. And what do you think about? Well, what you see. Well, what are you seeing? What are your eyes set upon? Are you seeing the things of the Lord? Well, the good heart, he's seeing the things of Christ. He's seeing the things of God, and his heart is set upon the things of God. It goes on in that verse to say, Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart's not with you. It's hard far from you. Jesus said concerning the hypocrites, they honor me with their lips, with their mouth, but their heart was far from him. If we focus, if we set our eyes upon Jesus and the things of Jesus, the light of the world, Jesus is the light of the world, then our mind, our our heart will be full of light. And the works of the body will be what? What? The deeds of light. The works of Christ. The works that he did. A man's heart is exactly where his treasure is. A good heart and a single eye if it be upon Christ. His citizenship is in heaven. Do you recognize this morning that your citizenship is not in this earth? If you're a child of God, it is in heaven. Philippians chapter 3 and and verse 20 and 21 says, For our conversation, our citizenship, our country, is in heaven 
from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Is that what you're looking for? Is that what you're expecting? Listen, that's valuable. That's valuable treasure. The one who has a good heart, he seeks the treasures that are eternal. We're already read to you 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. The last part of that verse says, The things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. You see, we can't necessarily see with the physical eye and touch with the hand the things that are pleasing to God. But we can know that we ought to be doing them. And we can know if we are. And therefore we're laying up treasures in heaven. Treasures that are eternal. They're incorruptible. They are secure. Jesus said in verse 20. They're secure. There's no, no thief going to break in and steal. We already read to you Romans, uh, Romans 8, 32 through 39. They're not going to fade away. They're eternal. How long is eternal? <laughs> Forever. Amen. There's a song that we sing. When we've been there 10,000 years, we've only just begun. <laughs> you see, the earth's not even 10,000 years old. Yeah. 6,000 years of the earth seems like a long time, huh? But 10,000 years in eternity and we've only just begun. There's no end to eternity. They cause our, uh, the things which are eternal, they cause our whole body to be full of life. The things of, of Christ do. We're, we're consumed with them. Our, our being, our purpose, our, our life is, is filled with serving Him. Concerned about that we be pleasing to Him. We love and serve God. He's near. He's near to God. The one who has a good heart is near to God. Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse 12, I am the light of the world. He that followeth. There again, I've got to point out to you that verb, followeth. You followed him yesterday, but you're following him today, and you will follow him in the future. You see, it's an ever-present tense verb. Huh. In other words, it continues on. Amen. There's no stopping. <laughs> he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. What's that mean? Shall have the light of life. His life will be a life of light. And the deeds which he do are deeds of light. You see... Well, moving on. The bad heart. The evil eye. The bad heart is just like the evil eye. Taking in things of the world, things that are wickedness, things that are against Christ. Jesus told, told his church, told his disciples, told his apostles. He said, don't think it's strange that they hate you. They hated me first. 
insinuating there that, that we're to be like Christ, and if we're like Christ, the, the world's going to hate us. Why? Because they're evil. John chapter 3, and I think it's verse 18, said, Men love darkness rather than light. Why do they love darkness? Because their deeds are evil. <laughs> this evil eye, this bad heart does not focus upon the true treasure. It thinks the things that can see and the things that can touch are, are, are what's real and what's true. Treasure. They're just fooling themselves. It's not focused on the things of God and the body is full of darkness, our text says. Full of darkness. That is the one who's, who's following after the things of the world. You're <laughs> you're not performing deeds of light. Your deeds and your times and your energies are given to that which the world is going after. And we'll see that later on in this chapter as we continue. <laughs> We're not to set our heart upon earthly treasures. They are corruptible. They, they, they decay. They uh, can be eaten by moths. But bugs can get in them and destroy them. Rust can set in. Corrosion and destroy them. So therefore they're insecure. They can be stolen. And you're not going to take them with you. Amen. And they cause our heart to be full of darkness. And they'll consume us. And they'll alienate a person from God. They lead, they lead to covetousness. They are covetousness. Complaining and fear. Oh, he deals with fear later on too. Probably deal with that next week. Bear from fear of not having the things of this world. Then he goes in verse 24 saying you cannot serve two masters. Two masters. There's a good master and there's a corrupt master. You can't serve them both. You cannot serve God and the things of this world an impossibility the things of this world are not pleasing to God what's pleasing to God the things of God that's what pleases him there are some who think gain is godliness listen up Joel Osteen yes amen They think that gain is godliness. See here? God's blessing me. You ever hear that? And what are they pointing at? They're pointing at the things that they can see and the things that they can touch and handle. The things that they've stored up to themselves. Turn with me to the book of First Timothy. First Timothy. 
chapter 6, in verse 5. He said, Purse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Those who think that gain is godliness... He says, they have a corrupt mind and they're destitute of the truth. Amen. And he tells the, the Christian, the child of God, to turn away from them. Amen. But godliness, godliness, doing the will of God, living as God would have you to live, with and being content with that, just such things as God allows you to have is great gain. Great gain. You might not have very much of the things you can see and the things you can touch. But being content, realizing that you have just as much as God wants you to have and being content with that great gain. You might only have a ham hock and soup beans and cornbread for supper every night of the week because that's all that you can afford. But being content with that because God has provided Amen. and thanking Him for it is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us there be content. That's all we need. Food and raiment. Food, clothing, and shelter. That's all we need. Trusting in God. To provide. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition for the love of money, the love of those things is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Yeah, there have been many, many a Christian who've erred from the faith and sought after those things. And he says they've pierced themselves through and had many hurts, many mournings, many things to mourn. A servant cannot follow both. You see, the, the masters are going in different directions. The masters are going two, two different directions. I would say they're diabolically opposed <laughs> to one another. You cannot please God and men. If we're pleasing man, you can be well assured you're not pleasing God. If you're pleasing God, you can be well assured you're not pleasing man. You cannot love, obey, and cleave to both. Can't do it. There are many Christians who, who think that you can have one foot in the world serving the cares and desires of the world and have the other foot over here serving God and the things of God. What do we 
do you mean by that? Well, on Sunday we come in and we're all pious and, and look at me, I'm such a good Christian and oh, it's great to get together and everything. And then we go out of here, oh, it's great to be out here in the world. Look at this, look at this, look at this. We forget about God. We leave God in, in the house of the Lord on Sunday. And Monday through Saturday, <laughs> we're serving the cares of the world. You see, if you're a true disciple of Christ, you're a hypocrite in living that way. You see, he has divided affections. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. The verses preceding that, Paul outlines, he gives his credentials. He gives all, all the things that he had in the flesh. But when he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, through repentance and faith, he said, but what things were gained to me, those things that I once counted gain, profit, treasure, Those I counted loss for Christ. Amen. He goes on down in that chapter in verses 18 and 19. He said, For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. In other words, they're not walking after the things of Christ. They're walking after the flesh and the cares of the flesh and, and amassing things to themselves. The human credentials whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things. See, that's what the Apostle Paul had come to realize. How did he come to realize that? <laughs> when he came to know Jesus Christ. He came to realize the folly, folly, the emptiness of the flesh and the true riches which were in Christ Jesus. And so we're told in 1 John 2.15, Love not the world, neither the things that are of the world. For the love of the Father is not in him. If any man love the world, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Closing the book of Psalms in 123, not the 23rd chapter, but 100 chapters later, Psalms 123, and verse 1, Unto thee lift I up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that He have mercy upon us. What are your eyes waiting upon this morning? What do you think about? What are your treasures? What do you really treasure? If it be the things of God, then get busy and serve Him. Serve Him. If it be the things of the world, oh, I implore you to see that they don't last. They don't last. You might leave them today. Shall we stand? Have a song in closing.